So we looked at a population of about just over 31,000 well-controlled, low-risk patients with type 2 diabetes, all over 18 years of age. And we looked at how frequently do they have their hemoglobin A1C tested. So hemoglobin A1C is a measure of average blood sugar over the course of three months. And there's a lot of variability clinically in terms of how frequently patients have it tested. We wanted to see in the real world uh, practice, how frequently do these patients actually have their test done? And what we found is that about 6% of all patients, of this 31 and a half thousand patients, they're tested five or more times a year, which if you consider the fact that they're low risk, they're not treated with insulin, they all have type 2 rather than type 1 diabetes, and they're not pregnant, there's not only cl no clinical utility to such frequent testing, but also no physiologic basis, as the hemoglobin A1C is a measure of glycemia over three months. So checking more frequently than that is very rarely useful in the general population. We also found that more than half, so 55% of patients, are checked three or four times a year, so once a quarter. That is physiologically reasonable, but often not clinically necessary in such a low-risk population. And only a minority of patients were checked as recommended by the guidelines, which is once or twice a year. It's a problem on multiple levels. So first, if you look at over-testing by itself, there's the burden of getting a test. Patients have to take the time to go to the lab, have their blood drawn. Half of our patients, this was not the only test that was done. They had their lipid panel checked at the same time, so they had to be fasting prior to that. There's the cost of having the test, the blood draw, the lab itself. You then think about the implications of what do doctors do with that test result. If they do nothing, which was the case for the majority of our patients because they were already well controlled, it's a waste of a test, waste of patient's time and resources, and possibility of pain and worry for the patient. If the provider feels obligated to act on that test, that introduces additional possibilities of either overreaction or underreaction to a test. If you think about the, that most, more than 11% of the population have diabetes, most of it type 2 diabetes, most patients are controlled and don't have indications for frequent testing. If our findings extend to the general population of people with type 2 diabetes, the time, cost, and burden to patients in society could be staggering. Moreover, again, half of our patients, this was not the only test they had done at the time. They had their lipids panel checked at the same time. We know that lipids should only be checked once a year. Checking them quarterly is redundant as well. So I think hemoglobin A1C, even though it's one simple test, may just be the tip of the iceberg in terms of over-testing and over-utilization of healthcare resources. Moreover, we examine the association of over-testing or testing frequency in general in treatment patterns. We found that patients who are over-tested are more likely to be over-treated despite their baseline good glycemic control. Addition of additional glucose-lowering medications can increase the risk of hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. We know that hypoglycemia is associated with increased complications and mortality. More is not always better, and in this case, we see that more is actually less because patients can be not only burdened by additional tests, but also harmed by taking or being prescribed extra medications that they may not need. Guidelines don't tell us how much is too much. As a medical community, we've really been focused on minimizing underuse of healthcare resources. And while that is very important, we also have to think about reducing overuse because that's a problem as well. And while guidelines do speak about the minimum testing frequency, I think acknowledging the maximal testing frequency is important as well and would help the medical community and society in general avoid excess um, healthcare utilization and waste uh, that we see today.